Survival on Purpose coverage of the 2019 SHOT Show is sponsored by Hog Holsters, Olight Flashlights, and Heal That Pain Shoe Insert. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose coverage of the 2019 SHOT Show. And by popular demand, when I asked who, who everybody wanted to see what they wanted to see, one of the most popular answers was this man right here, Dave Canterbury. Dave, thanks as always you, for brother. taking me. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it, Brian. I love I know, you, man. I know I love you too, brother. I know you've been busy, busy, busy. I've come by here several times, and there's always like a crowd of people around you trying to, trying to I guess, compete for your time. So I really appreciate you taking oh, time for us. So. so I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Uh, when I started my channel, you were, I, I told you this before, you were literally one of my inspirations for not just starting my channel, but for learning a lot of new skills and stuff. You had, I, I don't know how many videos you had up at that time, like a thousand. Now, I mean, I binge watched your videos, everything from knife stuff to, to forging and blacksmith, and it's just such a wide variety of skills. But as I started thinking about this, I think, you know, I've been a scoutmaster for a long time, and I know that you, I just see you continually expanding your area of influence, and I think that I, guess, I thought we'd just find out what are, what are your thoughts about where the this whole outdoor movement community is going. If you think what, what you think is good about is going on right now, maybe what you think is is not so good, and how you kind of came to um, to to uh, develop those opinions. Um, you know, I think that the outdoor community is growing, and that's a good thing. And I think that's a product in a lot of ways of social media. Yeah. You know, Social media is a big double-edged sword. There's good things and bad things about it, obviously. But the more people, when we first started in 2007, there were probably three or four channels, maybe, on YouTube that were doing outdoor-type content, bushcraft survival. And now that's expanded exponentially to probably hundreds or even thousands of channels that are doing that type of content. I think with that expansion with podcasts and live streaming and Patreon and YouTube Red and all of these different ways that you can find this information, it makes it more accessible to people. And that accessibility has gotten people more interested in outdoors again. Whereas when you didn't have that, form of media in front of you all the time, you didn't have access to it, people had to seek out information if they couldn't find it, maybe they got bored of trying to find it and just didn't do it. Or they didn't realize that, hey, there's a lot of other people interested in this just like I am, whereas now those communities are in the thousands. So I think that part of it's a good thing. I think the bad part of what happens nowadays is we've gotten so away from the the core skills of the, of the frontier era and even before that that we're so gear heavy and gear oriented in our thinking now that we're almost, I, I kind of read an article or a headline to an article somewhere that said, suicide by backpack. And I, and I, I only read about the first few lines of, of the article because I was in a hurry and I was going somewhere else when I found the article, but it talks about a, a very real thing of people tend to carry such heavy loads in their backpacks nowadays that the wear and tear on their feet, on their knees, on their legs, uh, the fact that mechanical injuries, because you're off balance and things like that, are more prone. It's almost like we're carrying so much stuff that we really don't need to be comfortable. We're trying to bring our house to the woods instead of going to the woods and making that a home. And so I think that part is kind of being lost in a world of marketing. You know, and I'm guilty of marketing. Everybody who owns a business is guilty of marketing. You, you have to make money to support your family. So you're promoting product. So you become a salesman in a way. But at the same time, you have to realize that what you're promoting has to be there for a reason. And it, to promote any gadget that comes along is not the way I like to do things. What I like to do things is promote things that I know are heavy duty enough gear that are gonna last somebody a lifetime, something that's necessary in a woodland environment to be comfortable, and something that will be multifunctional in nature so that I can use it for different tasks within a camp environment. And that's the way that you reduce that pack weight. And really depending on the material that you try to use, and that's one of the things that I'm kind of, you know, a lot of people think, well, you've been there, you've done that, you've done all this stuff. But really one of the things that I haven't done a whole lot of is experimented with modern materials because I've always been so traditional and so stuck in that, that now, you know, I'm trying to try some of these more lightweight materials and see how they do, see how much better it is or if it's any better than carrying the traditional type materials. Because I'm a big guy, cotton, 
canvas, wool, you know, that's the stuff I like. But there's a lot of modern materials out there that are comparable to those things. They may not be as fireproof, some, in some cases not as weatherproof or multifunctional, but they're still good items to try out. And our job is to try these items so that we can be educated, so that when people come to us and say, hey, Brian, what do you think of this piece of kit? You have an intelligent answer. You know, you're not saying, well, I don't know. I've heard good things about it, but I never really tried it. I want to be that guy who's tried it all, and I'm sure you do too. So that when somebody asks, hey, what about this poncho, or what about this bivy sack, or what about this tent? Oh, yeah, I tried that for three weeks out in, you know, the Rocky Mountains, and it wasn't too bad. But after a little while of driving rain, it seems leaked. Yeah. Or that was a bulletproof piece of gear, and I'd buy one of them and recommend it tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so, sir. And I know you caught some grief over the years for, for, for selling your own products and Absolutely. stuff. You know what? But I can honestly say I bought several things from the Pathfinder. I don't know. Self Reliance Outfitters now, right? It used yep. to be the Pathfinder store. Right. And um, everything that I bought is rock solid. I mean, so. And I, I'm, I'm a kind of agree with you. If you got a business, you got to market. It. If you don't, if you're not willing to market your products aggressively, then you don't believe in it. That's <laughs> you know? exactly right. And if so, you're not willing to guarantee them, yeah. You know, that's the thing. I've always been a, and I'm only one third owner of my business. You know, my brother and my dad are co-owners of my business, so it's a three-way connection there. But really, when people look at our brand, they're looking at Dave Canterbury set. Right. You know, if if a bush pot has a problem. They don't go and say self reliance outfitter sells a crappy bush pot. It's all of a sudden Dave Canterbury sells a crappy bush pot. Yeah. So I pride myself in number one, making sure that we do our due diligence and research and development, that I test the product thoroughly before we ever bring it to market, and that we guarantee it for life. Yeah. You know, no matter what country it origins from, we guarantee it for life. I think that's important because that shows ownership in your brand. And if you're going to market it, you better own it. And your brand is is just taken taken off in the last several years. You've done a really good job of, I guess, building that brand. And I mean, if, you, if we can switch gears for a little bit, maybe real quick, quickly, kind of uh, in a short synopsis, like, what do you think has been really responsible for for your success? You know, you know, I, I think what it boils down to really is. The core of my existence, I guess, if that's what you want, how you want to put it, has always been that five and ten C's of survivability. And so, when I look at those, especially those first five C's, you know, cutting tool, combustion container, cordage, and cover, I've always kind of told my business partners, if we can't be experts at the five C's, then we're not doing something right, because my system was built on that. So, when I look at items to bring into my store or to develop something new. I'm not really looking to go outside the box. I got other people that can do that and I can help them promote their product if they're a new business. But if I'm going to create something new, it's generally going to fall into one of those 5C categories and I'm going to make sure that it's new and better or at least comparable to what I already have that may hit a different genre of people. It might be a little bit lighter weight, might be a little bit smaller, but it's still bulletproof, guaranteed for life, and it falls into one of those five categories. And I think that, staying where you came from, is really what makes a difference. And, and so that's what, that's what, my opinion, one of the things is responsible for your success is that consistency. You know, you, um, you, you've not, you know, you don't jump on the latest fad, and you've always been. You know, we're all we're all human. We all make mistakes. You make mistakes. You jump sure. up to it and move forward. But you, but but the consistency is there. And I know a lot. I've heard people say, "But if, just because if I was on a TV show, I could do all this." You know what? There's a lot of people spend on TV shows you never heard from again. You know, or, or what you have heard has been really bad, right? So, right. so um, I just think that. In my opinion, I don't want to sound like a, like a, you know this is a, a male love fest here, but but you know you, I think you and a few other people have done uh, probably really responsible for getting more people in the woods than anybody in my lifetime, and I'm 59 years old almost. And what I think is cool is that your, your focus on traditional stuff has really um, gotten a lot more people involved in those kind of skills. And look, I'm like you, man. I got a big lighter in my pocket, so a bow drill. For me, it's just a fun hobby. Right. I hope it's not something, but it's still, it's a fun hobby, right? It's, it's, it's good, clean fun. Absolutely. You can get out there, you're not hurting anybody, and you're learning new skills. And at, at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're teaching yourself that, you know what, you can do tough stuff and it's going to be okay. That's right. That's right. So, um, That's right. anyway, I don't want to take too much of your time, oh, but buddy, it's a pleasure. I, I really, I was always appreciate talking to you. And we got to. We need to take a quick look at your books. You are, I'm sitting next to a best selling author here, man. This is amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so, so what you got? We got, I've got 
four books that are currently out. I got a fifth one coming out in a couple months. And really, the fifth book was actually my wife's idea. So we've got Bushcraft 101, which is a New York Times bestseller twice, um, two different lists, uh, travel and camping. And it was my first book, and it really is kind of a culmination of my ideals, if it were, on going out into the woods. Right. And then Advanced Bushcraft kind of goes more into those core primitive type skills, how-tos and things like that. Uh, trapping, camp, trapping, gathering, and cooking in the wild was more about hunting, gathering, cooking, obviously. And then Bushcraft First Aid I wrote with Jason Hunt as just a supplement to the others because I think first aid and self-aid is a very important aspect of outdoor survival. One of the first skills you should probably learn. Yeah. So the only problem that we've had with these books, or complaints I would say probably, the major complaint with these books was always that there weren't enough illustrations. You know, you have a lot of text, but you don't have a lot of illustration, and people are visual learners. I'm that way myself. I'd rather look at a picture than read a bunch of words. So my wife said, why don't you pitch the idea of making an illustrated book of nothing but illustrations? So I was in the process of negotiating about another book, and I pitched the idea to them, and they loved it. So um, at my wife's suggestion, this next book coming out will be the Encyc Illustrated Encyclopedia of Bushcraft. It's got over 350 illustrations in it. It's an 8x10 hardback book, and it comes out in... April, May time. Very nice, very nice. So for those people like me, it's got pictures. <laughs> That's what I, the way I am too. Yes, sir. So be sure to check out. Um, I mean, where, where, where can they go to find? Where can they go to not not go to find you? Actually, but where can they go really. to find you? Um, you can go to selfrelianceoutfitters.com. You can look me up on Facebook um, under my name, Dave Canterbury. We have a large learning center on Facebook. It's a group called the Pathfinder Learning Center. It's got about 15,000 members. You can go there. Lots and lots of good information there. You know, I learn as much from people, you know, like Brian every day than, you know, anything else. I like to learn from other people. I like to learn with other people. And if I wake up in the morning and I didn't learn something the day before, you know, then I'm not very happy. I wake up with a smile on my face if I learn something every day. There you go, so thanks again, Dave, for taking the minute no out of your busy schedule to talk to us. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose coverage of the 2019 SHOT Show. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Survival on Purpose coverage of the 2019 SHOT Show. Once again, I'd like to thank my sponsors and encourage you to go check them out. First of all, Hog Holsters, helping Americans wear guns. Olight Flashlights, makers of the PL Mini, PL Valkyrie, and lots of other cool flashlights. And the folks at Heal That Pain Heel Seats, which I'm wearing right now, they literally changed my life. So I encourage you to check them all out. Tell them I said hello and thanks for sponsoring this year's coverage of the 2019 SHOT Show. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.